So let's be honest everyone, even when you take into consideration the Boruto series, right? When you think about a group of elite shinobi that serve as a antagonistic force within the Naruto franchise, you're more than likely going to come up with the Akatsuki rather than the Kara organization who are a group of, well, modified beings to say the least that are, you know, present the current antagonistic force within the Naruto franchise, specifically the Boruto side of it. And with today's video, I just wanted to discuss my personal feelings on the Kara organization to Diet, um, why I feel they aren't really standing out as much as they should, and of course this video is, is set up, our the whole objective is to ask you guys your opinion on Kara in the Boruto manga and anime to, you know, by extension and just you know spark my discussion with you guys just to hit off the weekend for the most part but of course as per usual before we get into it be sure to rate comment and subscribe we're on our way to a thousand subscribers guys and you know of course shout out to the new and returning subscribers i really appreciate the support you guys have been commenting you know liking subscribing the videos you know enough respect enough love but let's get right into today's discussion so kara of course Initial impressions, I know a lot of persons have compared them to the Akatsuki organization for the most part and that's only natural, the Akatsuki have left a very <laughs> notable impression or a lasting impression when it comes down to the fans of Naruto. So any other organization that comes up further along in the timeline, of course comparisons will be made to them. Now, in terms of my opinion, or at least what I've observed about, you know, how fans have been reacting to Kara, it isn't 100% positive, or at least it's not as, they don't seem as impacted, or it's not as strong an impression on them as, like, say, the Akatsuki. And I think that's for, like, a various reasons, to say the least. Now, Kara as an organization, of course, I think they lack something the Akatsuki had. But for me to express my opinion on it, I think I have to break it down into like certain phases to kind of at least compare the two groups. Um, and I'll say this before I even get into it. I'm not 100% against Kara. I, I like them so far, but I think they leave much to be... Like, there's more to be desired there. There's more potential to be exploited with them as characters, I feel. So, let's get into it. So, introduction. First thing. When you really compare Kara and the Akatsuki, it's like almost night and day in terms of the, the impact of their introduction. And this is for various reasons. Now, when you look at the Boruto series, right? The first legitimate member... I'm doing this off memory, so don't crucify me. But the first legitimate member that we really encounter from the inners should have been Kashin Koji. And I like Kashin Koji. He's the, I guess, right now, the best member of Kara in terms of character, I feel. And he, he, even, even his character needs to be fleshed out a whole lot more. <laughs> so that's saying a lot. But he's the first person that really comes into contact with Team 7 like that. And of course, he does go ahead to actually face off against Konohamaru and Team 7, but more so Konohamaru. And of course, he easily defeats Konohamaru and spares the rest of Team 7. Now, that's good and all, but I think the problem is when you compare it to, say, Itachi and Kisame invading the Leaf, the difference, I feel, is that there's such a... There's such a build-up to, not necessarily even the Akatsuki, but the fact that, for example, with Itachi, there's a link between said character. We've been hearing about Itachi um, in some shape or form since like the earliest parts of the Naruto franchise. And I think getting to see him and the fact that he comes into the picture and easily takes out most of the Jonin that we've, you know, grown to more or less love by that point, including Kakashi, um, a character who I feel has you know, had this presence um, when it comes on to managing Team 7. At least when you compare him to Konohamaru and the fact that he lost so easy to Itachi, I think it leaves a stronger impression um, on us when you really compare the two. And 
Konohamaru is skilled, but honestly, I don't think the reception to the audience, like the audience reception to him are, well, the critical reception. <laughs> Can I put it like that? Yeah, I don't think it's been favorable. I think persons have been disappointed in how Konohamaru has been executed in the new era. And that kind of segue, there's kind of like a domino effect where like, yeah, Kashin Koji beats Konohamaru. Yeah, he must be skilled, but you know, based on how you feel about Konami, it's like deep down, it's like it's no big deal. <laughs> you see what I mean? So that that's like a major difference when I say like when it comes on to the introduction of these characters. There's there's, there's actual legitimate build up um to the characters are like Itachi, and even though it was the first we were meeting Kisame, um, the fact that he was like a member, well, an ex member of the Seven um, Swordsmen of the Mist, um, that kind of almost tied him back to like Zabuza, another character we've seen before. So there's kind of like this, like even if you couldn't really put it into words, there's like almost this payoff to this build up that was actually there, even if you didn't realize it, I feel. So it kind of gives the Akatsuki more of a stronger introduction, I feel, when you compare him to Kara, because yeah, it, ju it just works out even better. All right, so stronger introduction aside, right? I feel in terms of their place in the world is, <sighs> how should I even put it? Like the Akatsuki's presence in the world, I feel it's more on show than Boruto's side of things. And what I mean by that is that, oh, okay. We've seen that there are ninjas, there are shinobi within Naruto's world that have left the village as like as early as, of course, the arc with Zabuza, um, the land of weaves. So, and we've seen them work with organizations or, you know, crime lords before. And, of course, there's been mention of the bingo book and all of that already as well by that time that Itachi and Kisame come in. And we've, you know, been introduced. We've kind of seen where the tier beasts can do. So, it's all these different factors that kind of pull together to say, okay, there are a lot of things on show to justify the existence and presence of the Akatsuki, I feel. And while we can make our assumptions about the members of Kara, especially with the latest episodes in the Boruto anime with like Victor and Deepa, where or even before those episodes came out, you could make the, the assumption, the educated guess that the members of Kara are more than likely like survivors of the Fort Great Ninja War. But you see, because the Boruto series is Boruto side of the franchise is so in terms of the positives of it, it's so segmented between like the anime, the manga, and the novels. It's like, okay, they may be survivors of the Fort Great Ninja War, but there isn't really enough on show to feel all that invested in them, if you get what I mean. There are just so many other factors at play for the Akatsuki in terms of their introduction and their whole presence in the world. There's more... Not that there's no reason for Kara, but there's just it's just the, the tried and tested rule of show don't tell, and I feel like there are a lot of factors in place for Yakatsuki's existence before they're even introduced compared to like say a, a Kara. You know, it, it's just it feels more justified. If you get what I mean. <laughs> I don't know if I'm putting this to you guys. Um the way it should be put to you guys, but I think you guys may be resonating with what I'm saying. Because generally speaking, I just think persons really resonate with Akatsuki more. And um, I think it comes down to the piercing as well when it comes on to Kara of the respective stories. In terms of, as I said, the positives for Borto are kind of spread out. So I feel like a lot of the factors that would have went towards building up and justifying the presence of Kara, I think that's more so in, you know, the extended media when that should be in the main story. Like, you know, you hear, or you hear articles, like for example, when Organic Dinosaur, like, translates certain articles and you hear Naruto's in, like, this war against drugs or there are persons within the government who Kara have influence over and the whole buildup of how Kara has been slowly seeping their influence into the whole ninja world at the moment. It's like stuff like that. Well, and I imagine those that that that, that attempt to like seep into the ninja world has been going on since the fourth great ninja war. 
and it's like little stuff like that which should be unsure within the main story i feel has led to Kara feeling kind of it's just yeah it just feels eh yeah that, that's how i'm describing it, it feels eh so th there's that and then even now with what's been shown already because we have what Kashin koji delta boro code um victor amado ishiki and it's almost as if you could almost replace a lot of the characters so far of course disclaimer this is just based on what's been presented so far as of chapter 50 and episode 168 or is it 169 yeah of board <laughs> of the board of the anime so disclaimer there so yeah that's really and truly it and with akansuki i think what's also like almost like a cheat code or a shortcut when it comes on to establishing characters the whole idea of playing off the akatsuki in pairs was a damn good idea i'm not gonna lie it kind of helps to flesh out and showcase their personalities and it kind of feels like car doesn't have that they almost work alone yeah i just feel generally speaking characters can play off each other based on their interactions which is to be expected which is why i kind of go back to the point where i say Itachi beating Kakashi feels more of a solid impression or introduction versus Kashin Koji beating Konohamaru who hasn't really felt impressive. <laughs> like if you're just going off the manga alone, you cannot tell me like Konohamaru is one of your favorite characters. Honestly, up to about chapter 23 or 24 or thereabout when um, Kashin Koji beats Konohamaru, you can't tell me <laughs> if I'm being honest. So yeah. And so between the introduction, the more of a justifiable presence in the world in terms of it being more factors being built up to contribute to, you know, justify their presence and um, just them having more personality and the fact that even their goals, like even though I feel like some of the Akatsuki members could have been fleshed out a bit more, I think enough was shown to say, yo, this is a group of dysfunctional guys who all have their own agenda, but they've come together under um, because of relatable backstories. And well, some yes, some no, but for the most part, yeah. And they're trying to accomplish X and Y goal. Kara just feels meh, meh. <laughs> so it kind of goes back to what I'm saying. It's just that, generally speaking, Boruto. The whole entire story has become very corporate and as a result the positives have become split among the various sectors of what is now known as the product of Boruto. So as a result of that I feel like the Akatsuki right now at least until proven otherwise stand as a more well narratively compelling group when compared with Kara. Guys, tell me, tell me if I'm talking foolishness in the comment section below. But uh, that's been 13 minutes. I think I'll call it that for this video. If there are any other like points, like solid points, you want me to like do like a follow up video on, um, regarding the Akatsuki versus Carl, then you can let me know in the comment section below or in the Discord. We can even talk there as well. Um, and you know, we just take it from there. <laughs> so, yeah. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this little discussion because I was just thinking about it. I'm like, yo, let me just, you know, start the camera. But I think this is a decent way to start off the weekend. I think, hopefully. <laughs> but yeah, hope you guys are safe. Stay cool. Stay chill. Ice for cool. <laughs> All right, let's, let's finish with the foolishness. But thanks for tuning in, guys. As I said, be sure to subscribe if you enjoy Boruto content and black clover content as well look out for my upcoming black clover video which i'll be covering the oh yeah just wait and see <laughs> but yeah sanju chia i'll see you guys in the next video